So in this video, I just want to go through some other features that are present in the dev version. Remember, this is the feature freeze that is going to be version 1.0. So all the features are in here right now. Um, I'll just give you a quick look at my FreeCAD version. So it's 0.22.0 dev. And my revision number is 37730, which is the latest one that you could download at the time of this uh, video. So first thing I want to do, um, you'll remember in the last video, I changed it to a different theme. That theme is no longer available. Um, it, when I downloaded this, it doesn't have it in the list anymore. I'm assuming it's a path, but I'm not going to do anything about that. I'm just going to leave it in classic for now. Uh, one thing I will do, though, I'm going to take this task tab. I'm just going to move it over to the right hand side because I like the idea of having the tasks over here. That helps me to be able to see my tasks and my, my model at the same time. So I'm going to create a new um, file and then I'm going to create a part in that file and I'm going to create a body in that file. So, so now you can see I have my tasks on this side. I have my model tree on this side. Now what I'm going to do is create a sketch. Of course, now I have to look over here. So go to my X, Y plane. And the first thing I want to show you is if you take a box, for instance, as I drag that box out, you can see it has dimensions. I can type straight into those dimensions. And not only will it make a box of 20 by 25, it dimensions that box too which is awesome. If I just drag out this box and say, okay, there, notice there are no dimensions on it. So when you actually type them in, so 20 tab 25, um, I have my box that size. So we'll just go through that one more time. I'll take a box. I type in 20, a tab, and then 25. Now I've got a box dimensioned 2025. So one thing to look is it's automatically putting in constraints. So on this particular one, it's actually constrained it to that center line there. If you look, there's the constraint right there. I'm going to grab that constraint, constraint and just delete it. And then I'm going to move it over here. So you can do all of that. So that's how you add dimensions as you're drawing, which is awesome. The next thing I want to show you is when I do a box, if you look over here in my tasks, I have the type of box. So instead of having to drop down and pick a specific one, if I just pick the first one that's listed there, I can change its mode here. So I can say, I want this to be a center box and two corners. And I can do the same dimensions, of course. So 60 and 30 say, Boom, now I have a box dimension spot on in the center. It's already constrained. Now, another interesting one for boxes. And obviously a lot of, uh, a lot of your sketches start out as a box. So it's good to have this box stuff here. So one thing you can do with boxes is you can say, I want them to have rounded corners. So again, I can pick um, dimensions here, tab in uh, for my dimensions. And then it gives me a third one when I tab, which is the radius. So if I want the radius to be five, just hit five there. And now I have a box with radii. Um, and if you look, I have dimensions for the radii. They're equal, so they're all dimensioned at five millimeters. There's the 51 I put in there and the 45 I put in there. As you'll probably agree, that is a huge time saver. So. Another one on the boxes, which is also uh, interesting, is if I want to go, I'm going to go with the center one this time. I'm going to pick this frame. When I click on the center and I open up my box, I go to 60 and I'm going to say 50. I tab. Now it says, what offset do I want for my box? Because I've got this frame, so I can offset my frame. I'll offset it by 15. And boom, there's a frame and it has, if you look, I have a dimension for the inside of 50 by 60. And then I have an offset of 15 millimeters right there. 
so it's fully constrained again. And then one final one with these boxes. I think this stuff is awesome. It really helps you to get things put down quickly. So if we do a rounded corner and a frame, and I pick the center, I want to do it with a center box. Click there, I come out here, I go 60 and 50, and then my offset, oh no, the next one is my radius. So my radius, I'm gonna make eight. And then my offset, it says 4.55. If I want it to be a negative offset, I can say minus five, let's say. And then if I pick that, now I have a box where the outside is dimensioned with my 60 and my 50. My eight millimeter radius is here. They're all equal around there. And then everything else is an offset to that. So that box is fully constrained with rounded corners with an inside offset that is rounded. That's absolutely super fast compared to what we were doing before. So hopefully you'll like that. Then a new, obviously with my uh, circles, I can do the same thing here. I got center or three rim points. I'm gonna just pick the center one. I go in my center and then if I want it to be a 50 millimeter diameter, boom, done, dimensioned. So again, that, that makes a, a fantastic way to create parts into your sketch or uh, elements into your sketch, I should say, not to confuse you. Um, that is another awesome one. Then we have this slot guy here. If we pick the arc slot, you'll see the arc ends and flat ends. So I wanna show you this because this is something that's interesting too and very useful. So if I'm creating an arc, I can create it here and then I'll just spin it around and notice how it has flat ends. Of course, I can use the dimensioning again if I want to, uh, or I can put it down here and then dimension it afterwards. And then the arc ends is this way. So if we do a new one, it's going to be an arc end this time. Come around here. And then it lets me pick my thickness. And now I've got that same radial piece with arc ends. And I'm going to just get rid of that. Now another thing that is interesting in the um, sketcher. So if I create something with a polyline, just any shape, I'm going to create a shape just so you can see this. And we know if we hit M, we can change the way the polyline works. So it's just M. And then I want to go back straight. I'm going to go back to here. And we'll come up to here. And we'll join it. Now, if I select all of this, we have this offset tool. Click here. I can offset it with arcs, which means it's radial around the outside, or intersection, which means it's going to have square corners. And then boom, I have an offset around a shape. So again, that's something that they've included. You could um, bring it in from the draft workbench in the past, but now it's included here in the sketcher. Um, so that all works fantastically too. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, a great way to create shapes and to create sketches. Now I'm gonna create a couple more shapes just quickly. I'm gonna put a square here and I'm gonna put a circle here. I don't care what sizes they are. Then I'm gonna close the sketch. Now, as you can see, I have three separate shapes and I'm gonna pad them. Boom, you can have multiple solids in one body now. Now there is a setting, if yours doesn't work for some reason, if you go into the preferences under part design, there's a set in here that says allow multiple solids in part design body by default. And it says it's experimental, so if it blows up, that's down on you. But um, if yours is not checked, you can check that, and that will allow you to create 
bodies like this. Now, or, or sorry, um, solids, multiple solids in a body. And it's important that we distinguish that. These are not three bodies. These are three solids inside one body. So I can't do a Boolean between these two solids. I can only do the Boolean between body and body um, in part design. So one thing I can do, if I click on this face and I click on pad, I can pad off a face now. So if you look at that, I just added 30 millimeters to that face. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna pick that edge. I'm gonna put a chamfer on that edge. And I'm gonna, oh, nice chamfer, make it bigger. Say, okay. I can pick that face. I can pad that face again. Let me go up a little bit more. Say OK. I'm going to pick that edge. I'm going to chamfer that one as well. I'm going to increase that chamfer. Say OK. And then the other thing you can do is if you pick a face, you can actually create um, a hole in that face. And if I go down here, let me just tilt that up so you can see that there's a hole in there. Of course, I could go the whole way through if I wanted to, so I can say through all. And now I have a hole the whole way through that little guy there. And that's um, basically pulling and pushing faces is what they call that in other systems. So you can, you can pad and pocket a face. And again, it creates one pocket, so that's all one piece. Now, um, obviously there's great uses for that. To, to make this, these uh, solids all one piece, you could extrude these faces into each other if you want to do that. For booleans, we can create a second body. And let's say we create another sketch. I'll just create on the XY plane. I'm just going to create something that overlaps everything. Like that. And I'll say OK to that. Then I'm going to pad that one. And I'm going to pad it. Actually, that's far enough. Don't need to pad it any more than that because it's covering everything. So now if I want to do a Boolean, remember I've got, I now have two bodies. So I, that's one body. And that's the other body. So if I want to do a Boolean between these two, I can do that in part design. Pick that, this is add a body. I select one of these parts of that body. Now I can fuse them. So those are all fused together. I can cut them. So that's the cut out one from the other. Or I can common them. That's what would be left if we do a common. So because I can have multiple solids, that all works quite well. Um, so you can create uh, multiple shapes. I can say OK to that. I can select this face and then I can pad this whole face. And say OK. Now if you look, it just padded that face. And so I have a step down inside. So it's quite, you can do some quite interesting things with the way that you can model this. So I think you'll agree there's plenty in this uh, newer version that's going to make our modeling lives easier and lots of features to uh, catch up on. As I work with this more and I find more stuff, I will definitely be creating new videos to show you that stuff. But in the meantime, I've been using it to create some models. Um, I've done a ruggedized box, which is all parametric. And I've done a, um, a laser cutout or um, organizer box that is, again, all parametric. But I also tested that the laser cutting all still works in this new version. So all of that stuff I'll be making videos on in the future here. So you'll be able to see those. If you want to see any insight into them, you can join my Patreon. I've released already released pictures and things of what I've done, what I've been doing, what I've been working on. Um, you can join for free and you'll see and hear about it. If you're a paid member, you get all the files and, and early release of videos and that kind of stuff too. 
Uh, so you can join our Patreon. You can just buy me a coffee if you want to, or you can uh, become a member here on YouTube and that will work too. So hopefully you found this interesting. I'm excited about this version. I can't wait till they release it as 1.0. There are still some, some minor bugs in it that I've seen, but um, nothing that's going to blow up. Uh, it seems very robust and actually modeling using faces and doing sketches on faces seems to be very robust. Um, so far, I haven't found any problems with any of that. So the topological naming issue seems to... Um, have been, for the most part, resolved. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so, and I will see you in the next video.